Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Andreva. Uh, media uh, all around the world already reports that uh, Kharkiv Mayor uh, Sinegub, uh, uh, sorry, Sinegubov um, state that uh, the Ukraine army get full control in the field on Kharkiv. Uh, what actually happened now there? Yeah, so uh, uh, Russian troops invaded Ukraine three days ago and Kharkiv is one of the goals because it is the second largest city in Ukraine and it is a strategic uh, object which uh, Putin wants to, to actually to get. Uh, and uh, Kharkiv, as all Ukrainian cities, is fighting back fiercely. Uh, we had uh, Russian troops uh, entered uh, the territory uh, near Kharkiv, which is, uh, so the border is 40 kilometers from the city. So now they are on the outskirts of Kharkiv, their positions are there. And uh, uh, th last night they started a very heavy shelling uh, of the uh, areas uh, in Kharkiv and uh, they, uh, the, one of the missiles got into the residential building, uh, other uh, got to the uh, gas pipeline and it exploded. So that was a very big uh, and very intense shelling and in the morning uh, the uh, uh, Russian troops on light vehicles uh, in groups of four to five uh, vehicles started to come into the city trying to get to the city center. So there were, uh, they were attacking from the three directions. Uh, and the uh, Ukrainian military, they fought back fiercely and the uh, Russian actually were not ready for that because uh, they surrender, and when they see Ukrainian military, they put up, put down their uh, we weapons, and uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, military uh, uh, destroyed many of these uh, light vehicles and uh, captured uh, many uh, many soldiers uh, as captives. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, it, so it uh, it lasted uh, for probably. Uh, five hours or so, and we had fights uh, right on the streets, and you could hear, you know, shooting and the, the fights actually going on in the city. For now, it was announced, as you mentioned, that uh, uh, Ukraine has total control over the city, but uh, everyone should stay at home because there is now a special operation being carried out, and our uh, military and territorial defense units they are searching for those uh, Russian saboteurs or military who could uh, stay in the city and hide somewhere. Because we have seen uh, that in Kiev already happening several times. So what they do, they, for example, change uh, uh, their clothes into Ukrainian and uh, find themselves way in the city. Today in Kiev they used the uh, car of the medical aid and uh, try to get closer to the city center. Uh, and also uh, this one of the saboteurs in Kiev as well, carrying uh, the explosion in his backpack, uh, was found in one of the big shopping malls, apparently preparing, so he prepared to leave the backpack there and prepare an explosion. So everyone, uh, so people are asked to be very careful, check uh, the houses, uh, the nearby territory, because what uh, else Russia does, Russia saboteurs do, they put special marks like uh, the, that uh, give light in the night so that Russian missiles ca can be guided but by these marks. And we know how they look and uh, uh, government asks citizens to go outside and look for such kind of marks and destroy them. So that's where we are now and uh, the shelling continues. I can hear it staying at home and uh, it probably will continue also during the night. Uh, does it mean, uh, mean uh, Mr. Andreeva, that uh, the people uh, live difficult nowadays? Uh, do you have everything for everyday life? Well, uh, at first we were in kind of shock, frozen, because n nobody uh, could believe that it is actually happening. People were preparing uh, and living their normal lives. Now everything is closed, uh, everyone stay, is, stays inside. The, I think that there, are will, there will be shortages of supplies, because for now there is almost no fuel, so if you can have a car, you, can, you cannot uh, fuel it. Then I was in the nearby shop, because you cannot actually move around the city. People stay where they live. So there is a, 
uh, nothing there uh, from from the fresh products. I mean, something like milk, eggs, meat. So uh, th that is all gone. But then uh, what uh, we are now concentrating on is, you know, surviving and fighting back uh, Russians. So that is what so people can you know stay without the, the the necessary supplies for some times but of course if it's last longer then it will be a, a bigger a much bigger problem uh, does it mean that maybe uh, you will be face uh, faced with a humanitarian crisis I think so, and I think that the international uh, uh, international organizations and our partners, uh, who countries who help Ukraine, they will help with supplies, uh, uh, humanitarian aid, and medical uh, uh, medical supplies are also in a very big need now in Ukraine, and also uh, other needs that that could could happen because uh, well, uh, if if the Putin continues with this war, he, the, there will be a huge, uh, uh, huge humanitarian catastrophe because we, Ukraine is a nation of 40 million people. And even if it's reported that uh, uh, I think 400,000 uh, have left, then we have uh, another, you know, uh, 39 million people inside the country. So that's a very big number. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um all, many also report that uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine President uh, Zelensky accepted the ultimatum of the Russian President Putin. What happened now? Does the Ukrainian delegation is already on the way to Be uh, Belarus? Well, uh, it's uh, it's probably how Russia would love to see, you know, the, the, this situation, and that is why they are spreading information about that the Zelensky uh, to, to, uh, con uh, so he accepted the ultimatum. No, he did not, and you know, Russian demands they cannot be fulfilled because what Putin says is he is talking about some kind of denazification uh, and demilitarization of Ukraine. Well, there are no Nazis here. I live in a Russian-speaking uh, uh, city where uh, Russian speakers were never discriminated. We have all kinds of different nations here in Ukraine. And President Zelensky himself is a Jew by nationality. So he is, it's, it's ridiculous to call him or, you know, Ukrainian government Nazis because that's just not, uh, not the point at all. We don't have any uh, right-wing parties in the parliament now. So that is all, you know, the fabricated uh, lies by Putin to uh, somehow to legitimize his invasion. So, of course, this uh, ultimatum cannot be fulfilled. But uh, the, the recent news that there will be talks on the border with Belarus on the Pripyat River, which is exactly on the border. That's a good news. That gives us chance that probably there will be some kind of ceasefire, uh, and uh, that that will give the possibility uh, to 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 stop this war. Because I just cannot take seeing uh, Ukrainian children killed by Russian soldiers. That is something that you would not imagine happening. Today, during the night uh, in Kiev, a car uh, with a family of two uh, grown-ups and three children uh, was shot by uh, Russian soldiers. And uh, the both parents died and one of the kids and two of them are now in the hospital. So I, for, to stop that kind of uh, war crimes in Ukraine, I think it is necessary to go for any kind of talks but of course there will be no concessions given because ukraine has has not has never threatened russia with anything and we we, we don't we cannot you know concess with denazification because there is no such point here at all okay and okay. just uh, let me uh, know or answer just one question miss andreva what do you predict how we will end this invasion Russian invasion, conflict or uh, this crisis, whatever. No, I would love to, you know, to you and others to refer to this exactly as a war because it's not a conflict or invasion or military operation, how Putin calls it. It's a war that now Russia is waging not only against Ukraine, but against all the free world. I have heard today Putin speaking to his higher commanders and saying that because of the sanctions that are put now, very severe sanctions on Russia, 
that uh, they need to respond and they need to respond to the West with all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, power they have. So he actually threatens the West right now with uh, nuclear weapons. And uh, he started to, to speak about this already when he was uh, legitimizing the so-called republics in his first speech. So uh, what is in his mind, we cannot predict, but we can for sure say that he will not stop in Ukraine. And if Western countries uh, do not stand up and allow Putin now to crush Ukraine, the next will be other countries. He will after that go for Baltic states, for Poland, who else? He is referring, you know, to restoring the uh, uh, Russian empire. But also, let's remember the Warsaw Pact and also the countries of the Warsaw Pact, Macedonia being one of them. What if next he will say that Macedonia was, you know, part of the NATO by mistake and now you have to be, uh, uh, so you have to go out of, of NATO and NATO should uh, become, uh, go to the previous borders. So that is all possible and that is why we think that all the world needs to stay together with Ukraine in this fight.